Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. So I recently had a run in with UPS. New ownership takes over and guy goes on vacation for two years due to stupid new rules. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. So I recently had a run in with UPS. UPS smashed a nearly new MacBook that I sent with them. I asked them nicely to pay me back for it and they arsed about, blaming me, blaming my packaging, saying it was impossible they damaged it etc. I was able to prove my packaging was flawless and get a statement from the Apple shop that I took it to to say it was damage caused by being dropped slash thrown. I could also prove it worked when I sent it. They weren't interested and messed me about for weeks, sending me from pillar to post, even threatening to make me pay interest on customs charges which I wasn't liable for as the laptop was smashed on arrival and thus worthless at import. I took it to small claims. They hired a lawyer who sent me letters saying they contested it and would go for full fees etc. if I lost. I went for it anyway, I did law stuff university so I knew the basics and I thought my case was pretty clear cut. I won. I won my costs back, plus extra, plus interest. They ignored the court order and did not pay. Now, this laptop was originally being sent to my beloved mother-in-law. She asked me to help her with the problem as UPS were also seriously harassing her for the customs fees. However very unexpectedly, before I could resolve it, she passed away. It was the last thing she ever asked me to do for her. I loved that woman more than pretty much any human on this planet, she was my mother, my best friend and my mentor. Taking down UPS was now my personal vendetta. I researched my options, I could have taken the usual, more conservative, legal routes to reclaim my money. But no. I don't care about the money anymore. I want revenge, I want drama, I want karmic justice. I went to the high court. I got a writ of control. I, of course, added on more fees and more interest. I then hired the most aggressive bailiff firm in London. I trusted that the shitty processes and attitude of UPS to mean they would ignore the letters and actually get a visit. They did. The bailiffs rock up at UPS headquarters, and explain the situation. UPS refused to pay so the bailiffs start listing goods. Security try to make them leave, the office manager tries to bully them out. Obviously no shits are given by the bailiffs and they crack on with their jobs. I wasn't allowed the body cam footage but they did send me a detailed report. The final conclusion is copied from it below. Calls were then made to the accounts manager who arrived in a hurry. As no payment was forthcoming from them the agent again explained the removal process and costs involved and called the office for approval to begin removals. The agent began to seize assets. The finance director then arrived on the scene. He was not at all happy about the attendance, but ultimately agreed to pay a voluntary payment in full from his personal account in order to stop the removal. I know it's a drop in the ocean to UPS, but I got more than double what I originally asked for to replace the laptop. They would have had to pay even more on top in fees to the bailiffs. I reckon it cost them at least 3x more than the original claim in the end. But mostly I just enjoy the mental image of the flustered finance director and his impotent rage, having to pay his own money to stop the heavies taking desktop computers and fancy pot plants and things out of their swanky head office lobby. New ownership takes over and guy goes on vacation for two years due to stupid new rules. A family friend was working at the same company, since he was 26, up to when he was 64, when the below started. I did get his approval to retell the story, just not include anything specific, so I am keeping it anonymous and quite general on the specific details. Part of the problem, 
was the laws in the country increasing the retirement age from 62 to 65 when he was in his early mid-50s, and then again from 65 to 67 when he was about 62 to 63. The old owners were a family and run the business with benefits to the employees. From everything I have heard, I think they were giving an extra vacation week after every six years at the company. So on top of the standard four weeks, he had an extra six weeks at the time of the events. Also people had access to two weeks of working home office, when the job allowed them to or an extra week off, for those that couldn't use it. So he was getting 11 weeks off each year. As a bonus, the family owners were allowing people above 55 to use their vacation time as they desired. All at once, with about a two weeks notice which was just a courtesy, according to the guy, or segmented or even not use it and pile it up for when the retirement time came. Another other issue we have at our country is that when you submit retirement paperwork to the government they take f asterisk 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 i and g ages. So it is often the case that they may take over two years to calculate what to pay you and start paying you. Of course they pay back that time, but it still is an issue. For the period they delay and calculate you are getting only the minimum amount. But the guy had already about 44 years FO experience and a bit more ahead of him as an engineer, and a well-paid one, which meant a great retirement amount. So the onwards allowed for people to gather up their weeks of time off at the end of it and take 20 to 30 weeks off while submitting their retirement paperwork, so the money being paid would last them longer into the calculation period. Of course some didn't use it, but many did. So the company gets sold, because the owners saw some writing on the wall that their profiting wouldn't last more than six to seven years more and they wanted out. It was due to old age as well. New ownership, part of some Coca-Cola subsidiary, takes over and starts removing previous rules. At the guy's position there were three of them. Him, a second colleague and a third one. They push out the second, fire him and the third one has a heart attack literally a week later. RIP. They also go and dock his pay by 15%, because he is making too much for a simple engineer. The th three of them hold the patent for the machinery used on something specific, a second one on how to make that machinery and a third one on the process of the production of a small but significant part. Old owner had allowed them to put the patents on them when they invented a new, 30% cheaper and 75% faster, way of production years ago. So, so suddenly he is alone on that position at 64 and the company hires six people for him to train, on that position. At the same time they give up to the end of the year for all the piled up vacation time to be claimed. Notice the wording, claimed, not used. So the guy was using between 1 and 5 weeks for the past decade. So he had gathered 87 weeks of time off. Including the current year, but they hadn't looked at specific cases apparently. So they get him the 6 new people to train and they tell him that he needs to have them trained in 6 months. He still has 2.3 to 2.5 years until retirement. So he just goes and takes 87 weeks of vacation time, with a three hours notice, on a Friday evening starting the upcoming Monday, still no advanced notifying is required. They don't pay attention on it until the next Thursday, when the CEO notices the six people sitting around all day and nobody training them. The phone calls start. Then emails. Then letters get added to the mix. Then home visits by low-ranking secretaries and such to deliver the letters. Then management visiting his home. By week 7 the CEO has visited three times, but the door hasn't been opened once. His mother-in-law lives literally across the street, old woman, and him and his wife are taking care of her, so most of the time they are over there and can see everybody visiting their house xd. Production is actually running on itself, but no upkeep is done on that critical part of it. 
Week 11 he says that line 1 out of the 2 breaks down. They start visiting his house 3 to 4 times a day. Two weeks later second line breaks down. He obviously has a lot of friends inside and is getting constant updates. At that point they have only four weeks of backstock to keep the rest of production running. It is December, right before Christmas and he goes in during week 13. He says he needs to take some things from his locker room, lol, and the CEO starts yelling at him. You are stopping your time off right now. You are coming back to work to fix everything up. So he offers to come back for three days under an agreement that the entire week will be returned to him to use for time off. The CEO reluctantly agrees and tries to push him also for the training. No budging, only fix things up and go on vacation again. By Saturday everything is fixed up and even leaves a couple of basic instructions on what needs greasing every week. And he is off again. Few weeks pass, New Year has come around and a line is broken again. He gets called back, and CEO pretends like the previous deal will be used again. He goes in for two days, fixes everything, explains couple more things to the team of six, who by now have other duties, not to be sitting around all day, and when he is about to leave the CEO says, tomorrow at 8 a.m. The guy says what? And the CEO explains, you could claim your time off by the end of last year. You just ended your claimed time off, so you are losing the remaining 69 weeks. Guy is furious and he just goes straight and reports the company to workers' rights. They are actually dumbfounded by the time off he has amounted and the lady serving him calls her colleagues to listen in. They laugh their asses up by his story. And they actually issue a verdict the next day. It usually takes weeks, but apparently they had too much fun with this one. He is to get all of his time off, under the previous rule, for the time accrued up before the rules changed. So he has his 69 weeks, should be 70 due to him getting the one he worked on, renewed by their deal, but he lost that one, and he also has the 6 weeks from the new year. So he goes in with the verdict and gives it personally to a fuming CEO. According to the guy, steam was coming out of his ears. The CEO accepts unwillingly the deal with the guy coming in, for 3 days every 5 weeks off. If he is needed during his time off tough luck. They should work to produce back stock. A full year goes by, that way, and the guys is 66 at this point, he has been training the six slowly every five weeks, lol, and he is on his last visit before he takes the last five weeks off. The CEO goes to him and delivers personally the firing notice for the first day he will be back. He plays shocked and leaves for another five weeks. This one is a problem, because if you apply for retirement, even with half a year early slash less, you are losing significantly more than just that small period and he has about 10 months ahead of him for retirement. His last five weeks expire and he goes in to gather his stuff, only a coffee cup was remaining, he knew this was coming and he had taken everything over time. He gets an extremely big payout for the firing with no cause. Next day he sends a cease and desist letter to the company for the use of the three patents. He had talked with the fired guy, who had agreed with this revenge plan. He had also talked with the widow of the now dead friend and colleague, as well, and had both of them on board. He had been supporting actually the widow, but he didn't say anything to anyone, I found out very recently formed the other guy about it. So now the company has to stop using those machines and the method with zero notice. All the competitors have found and built and patented their own versions of the same and if they don't find a solution, it is going to cost 40% more and take 8 double time to produce the same part of the procedure of production. So they would need to double the lines, if they go and use the old method, while they look for a new one. 
After just three weeks of looking to license the method of one of the competitors and not getting anywhere, stock being extremely low by that point, they struck a deal with the guy. He will be an external contractor, who obviously keeps the patents to his name, he will be doing the maintenance on his own, will be paid by the hour, what he was previously making on a full day, and he will be on call for maintenance while having one person there at all time for upkeep. He went and stole all six of the people he trained, and hired them in his new company and put them to work back at that factory again, with almost double the pay Tay were receiving. He fully trained them very quickly and he was now getting paid a sh asterisk t ton. That CEO was fired for almost stopping production, the deal was struck mere hours before backstock ended, and he also cost the company a ton of money by firing that guy. At the funeral of the old owner, many of the old employees met up and told their different stories and apparently there were three more similar cases with patent holders, because the old owner treated his team extremely well. But he apparently was the only one to string them on for almost two years by being out on vacation time and getting paid. All of them had a great laugh, including the widow of the owner and his sister, who were the other two partners in the factory before it got sold. Update Two points I noticed that are not clear. The six people he stole from the factory to work for his new company that are then contracted back to the factory are earning what he was making when he worked at the company, and was considered too much. Their salary was extremely lower, so my comment above about them came double is incorrect. Apparently the factory was paying all six combined what the hero was making before he got that 15%, so for all of them it was a huge 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 pay raise, I would leave the factory as well if I received an offer for the same exact work but an increase of about 550%. This I learned from the hero, as an update apparently at the time that they stroked that last deal for him to work as a contractor, the backstock was two hours from finishing. But what was his last ace up his sleeve in negotiating, was that, don't forget that I need at least three days to fix both lines, so you already need to shut the factory down for three days, and every minute you delay this deal it's another minute of the entire factory being down. Apparently a single line couldn't produce enough for production to resume. Two lines produce about 110 to 120 percent of the required thing for production to continue, so he needed to get both lines up. The factory actually shut down for almost four days. And those idiots didn't pay the workers for those four days that they were not working. Which ended up a class action from over 800 workers at the workers' rights office. Which led to a fine and forcing the factory to pay them and that was the last drop that made the gals overflow. The news got to management from outside the country and ended up costing the CEO his job. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.